Hi friends, let's start with new chapter of Mathematics 1 that is chapter number 5 and chapter number 5 is Trigonometric Ratios. Let's start with an introduction. Now consider a right angle triangle as ABC. Now triangle ABC is right angled at angle B. Now AC is called as hypotenuse, you know it very well. Now BC is called as opposite side to angle A and AB is called as adjacent side to angle A. Now certain trigonometric ratios are sin A is equal to, do you know the formula of sin A? Yes, sin A is length of side opposite to A divided by hypotenuse which is equal to now tell me length of side opposite to angle A is called as BC divided by hypotenuse is AC. Then cos A do you remember the formula of cos A? Yes it is length of side adjacent to A divided by hypotenuse which is equal to what is length of side adjacent to A? From the figure it is AB divided by hypotenuse. Yes, it is AC. Now next is tan A. Do you know the formula of tan A? Yes, tan A is sin A upon cos A. Yada ya. So sin A upon cos A means length of side opposite to A divided by length of side adjacent to A which is equal to BC divided by AC sorry it is AB. Now let's move on next slide my right angle triangle is as it is. Now next ratio is cot A cot A is equal to 1 upon tan A which is equal to length of side adjacent to A divided by length of side opposite to A. So what is adjacent which is AB divided by what is opposite it is BC. So cot A is AB upon BC. Then sec A, sec A is 1 upon cos A which is equal to length of hypotenuse divided by length of side adjacent to A. Now tell me what is hypotenuse? It is AC divided by what is adjacent side? It is AB. And last is cosec A and cosec A is 1 divided by sin A and which is equal to length of hypotenuse divided by length of side opposite to A which is equal to. Now tell me what is hypotenuse? It is AC divided by opposite side is BC. These are my six basic trigonometric ratios. Now, next is standard circle. A circle whose center is origin is called as standard circle. And if the radius of standard circle is one unit, remember standard circle ka radius one unit hai, then it is called as standard unit circle like in next diagram. See the circle. Here radius is 1, then center is at origin, point A is on x-axis and the coordinates of A are obviously 1,0 because OA is also an, also the radius. And one point is on circle that is B, x, y. Now let's move further. This is my standard circle. We define the following sin theta. What is sin theta? Opposite upon hypotenuse and from the figure it is easily known as y upon r which is equal to y. Why y? Because my radius is 1. So if you substitute r is equal to 1 you will get y upon 1 which is equal to y. Now 
second is cos theta cos theta what is cos theta it is adjacent upon hypotenuse means x upon r once again if you substitute r is equal to 1 you will get x upon 1 which is equal to x so sin theta is y and cos theta is x therefore tan theta tan theta ka formula sin theta upon cos theta and hence my tan theta will be y divided by x where next point is fourth cosec theta cosec theta is 1 upon sin theta which is equal to 1 upon y then next next is sec theta sec theta is equal to 1 upon cos theta and 1 upon cos theta is 1 upon x and last is cot theta cot theta is equal to 1 upon tan theta or you may write as cos theta upon sin theta so ultimately it is the reciprocal of tan theta so what is tan theta it is y upon x so cot theta is x upon y let's move further now first of all i would like to tell you the signs of trigonometric ratios first of all draw x axis and y axis now first point if p x comma y is in first quadrant do you know very well the first quadrant yes so if p x comma y is in first quadrant then x and y are always positive now since cos theta is equal to x as per previous slide and sin theta is equal to y therefore all the trigonometric ratios in first quadrant must be positive so all trigonometric ratios are positive in first quadrant now after that second point if x comma y is in second quadrant now tell me second quadrant mein x or y ka sign kya hota hai yes x is negative and y is positive so since cos theta is equal to x and sin theta is equal to y as per previous slide so agar cos theta x hai and if x is negative in sec second quadrant and hence in second quadrant all the trigonometric ratios related to cos theta or related to x are negative and in second quadrant y is positive means sin theta is positive so tell me how many ratios are related with sin theta proper positive that is sin theta and cosec theta so sin theta and cosec theta are positive in second quadrant remember my friends tan theta ka formula is sin upon cos sin upon cos means positive divided by negative so tan theta is also negative in second quadrant and ultimately cot theta will be negative in second quadrant so therefore all ratios which involve only sin theta are positive and hence rest all are negative so ratios which involve only sin theta means sin and cosec these two ratios are positive and all other ratios are negative in second quadrant therefore in second quadrant only sin theta and cosec theta are positive and rest are negative remember these two points of first and second quadrant now let's move further my explanation of first and second quadrant is already over now move to third point if b x comma y is in third quadrant now tell me in third quadrant x and y both are negative so therefore tan theta is equal to y upon x and cot theta is equal to x upon y are positive because the negative signs of y and x will get cancelled in case of tan theta and cot theta and hence in third quadrant 
tan theta and cot theta are positive and rest all ratios are negative. So, third quadrant may tan or cot positive, rest all are negative. Therefore, in third quadrant only tan, tan theta and cot theta are positive, rest are negative. Now, fourth point. In fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant may x is positive and y is negative. So, cos theta is equal to x and sin theta is equal to y. Therefore, all ratios which involves only cos theta are positive. Why only cos theta? Because only x is positive. That means the ratios related with only cos theta are positive and rest are negative. So, in fourth quadrant, cos and sec are positive. Therefore, in fourth quadrant, cos and sec theta are positive and rest are negative. Now, if you see the diagram carefully, once again I repeat, in first quadrant, all ratios are positive. In second quadrant, sin and cosec are positive. In third, tan and cot are positive. And in fourth, cos and sec are positive. So, this can be remembered as, now, here we go, first quadrant may all likha hai. In second quadrant, sin is appearing. In third quadrant, tan is appearing. And in fourth quadrant, cos is appearing. So, this can be remembered as add sugar to coffee. Ye kya hai which may add sugar to coffee? Dekho, the first alphabet of each word indicate the trigonometrically ratio which are positive. Add ka first alphabet kya hai? A. That means first quadrant, all ratios are positive. Second word is sugar. What is starting alphabet? It is S. So, ultimately in second quadrant, sin and cosec are positive. Third, 2. 2 ka first alphabet is D. And hence in third quadrant, tan and ultimately cot are positive. And last word is coffee. The initial alphabet is C and hence in fourth quadrant, cos and related sec are positive. So, this is my introduction. Then, moving to next slide, the trigonometric ratios, let us see. It is angle theta, then sin theta, cos theta and tan theta. You know the table having theta is equal to 0 degree, sin theta is 0, cos theta, cos theta means cos 0 is equal to 1 and tan theta means tan 0 is equal to 0 because sin upon cos means 0 upon 1, it is 0. The next angle, 30 degree, 30 degree is pi by 6. Why pi by 6? Because pi is 180 degree. So, 180 degree upon 6 is 30 degree. Now, tell me, what is sin 30? Sin 30 is half. What is cos 30? It is root 3 by 2. And ultimately, tan theta is 1 upon root 3. Then, next angle is 45 degree. Once again, pi by 4 means 180 upon 4. You will get 45 degree. What is sin 45? 1 upon root 2. Cos 45, same, 1 upon root 2. And hence, my tan theta is 1 because sin upon cos 1 by root 2 upon 1 by root 2 is 1. Next is 60 degree 180 degree upon 3 means pi by 3. What is sin 60? Root 3 by 2. What is cos 60? 1 by 2 and hence my tan 60 is root 3. Then 90 degree means pi by 2 means 180 degree upon 2. What is sin 90? It is 1. What is cos 90? It is 0 and hence tan 90 does not exist because if you apply the formula sin upon cos in case of 90 degree you will get 1 upon 0 and if denominator is 0 then answer does not exist. Now moving further 
after 90 degree, it is 180 degree means pi. So, sin 180 degree is 0, cos 180 is minus 1. So, ultimately tan 180 kya aega? 0 upon minus 1 is 0. Moving further, 270 degree means 3 pi by 2. So, sin 270 degree is minus 1. Cos 270 degree is 0. Now, can you tell me tan 270 degree? Yes, you are right. It does not exist. Because if you apply the formula sin upon cos means minus 1 upon 0. And if denominator is 0, your answer does not exist. And last, last angle is 360 degree, that is 2 pi. Double of 180 degree is 360 degree. So, sin 360 degree is 0, cos 360 degree is 1. Now, can you tell me what is tan 360? Yes, you are right. It is 0 because if you apply once again the formula sin upon cos, you will get 0 upon 1 which is equal to 0. These are my trigonometric ratios. Now, fundamental identity is that guy. First, sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 for all thetas. Yes, you have studied in your 10th standard. Next, second is, 1 plus tan square theta is equal to sec square theta for all theta where cos theta must not be equal to 0. And third is 1 plus cot square theta is equal to cosec square theta for all thetas where sin theta is not equal to 0. These are the basic fundamental identities. Yaha bhe apna introduction khatam hua.